If you have to worship God, just to draw your attention to a few announcements, it's good to see um, all 3,000 of us here this morning. <laughs> yes! Amen. Uh, God has here who needs to be here, and it's, we're in His time and on, in His schedule. So thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. Amen? Amen. You have your points set up order form. If you're still interested in ordering points set, the, the deadline to, to order those and pay for those is December 10th. They'll be placed in the sanctuary for Christmas Eve candlelight service, which we are still having some way, some form, some fashion to make that happen. Um, also, if you notice a lot of you in the um, post office in the back, that is where you bring your Christmas cards to one another, and instead of paying postage, you just uh, pay that to the Lottie Moon mailbox, and it will go directly to our Lottie Moon International Mission offering. You also have included in your worship, had a little sparse this morning, last Sunday was pretty heavy, but you have your, your prayer guide. And one thing that you need to add to the prayer guide that I learned this morning is um, Ms. Doris Goblowski passed away sometime this morning. So we need to be in prayer for that family, the Barker family, and the Goblowski family. So please remember those people in your prayers. They need it tremendously during this time of, of grief. I'll turn your attention briefly to our Lottie Moon International Missions. Today is December the 6th. We will be looking at the last day, which is day 8. And it's, um, if you don't have your prayer guide with you, I'll just briefly read just a few things. This morning we're praying about um, the, the missionary red car serving in Rome, Italy. And in the brochure that you have, he offers a word of thanks. He said, I would like to take this occasion to thank our many faithful Southern Baptists who continue to give faithfully to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. You will never know the full extent to which your generosity is having an impact on the kingdom of God in many places around the world. And then we have uh, another item of prayer, a missionary to Japan, Daniel, and Tara Rice. They add their thanks. The Tokyo Olympics have been postponed due to the current global health crisis. We see this postponement as a blessing and an opportunity given to us by the Lord, which we can all agree with that. Thank you for your continued prayer and support. So those two families, Reed Carr from Italy, Daniel and Tara Rice, Japan. And then the things that we pray for today, we praise God for the continued work of Southern Baptists, who have remained committed to reaching the lost for more than 175 years. That's a praise. And then ask God to send more individuals and churches who will be committed to the vision of reaching the lost. And then thank God for sustaining the work of missionaries through all circumstances, including the most recent global pandemic. And those are things that we're grateful for and things that we pray for this morning. Read Carr. Rome, Italy, Daniel, and Tara Rice, Japan. And then you still have your uh, Lottie Moon Christmas offering envelope. So let's have a word of prayer together. We'll, we'll continue in our worship. Again, I'm so glad to look out and see you here this morning. It's a very, very large encouragement in all our lives to see each other. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege of coming together in the quietness of this moment. To fully focus our attention on you. To fully focus our attention on the blessing that you just pour out upon us and in our lives. Lord, we are so thankful. We thank you for the privilege of meeting together. Lord, be with those today who, for reasons, couldn't be with us today. And we, we extend this prayer over them, Father. And just pray that you just draw them close to you. And I know it's, it's, it's a little bit discouraging not to be able to be together with your church family. But Father, you're in the midst of us. <coughs> and we praise you for that comfort and that peace that you bring to our lives. No matter where we are, we are still connected in and through Jesus Christ, who is peace to us today. Father, we just lift up these missionaries to you. The Carr family, which is serving you. The Rice family, that is serving you. Rome, Italy, and Japan, Father, we don't know the loneliness that they often feel, probably in their hearts, knowing their way 
many, many miles away from their families. But Lord, we know that you're in their midst also. We pray for comfort and a peace in their hearts. Power and strength to carry on the work that you called them to do. Power and strength in the work that you called us to do in partnering with them in support through prayer and gifts. Father, thank you for using us in that way. Father, we praise you for the way you're working in our country. Even though we may feel overwhelmed at times with circumstances, Lord, you're still in control and we recognize your sovereignty in our country. Thank you, Father, for not giving up on us. We praise you for the ways that you're working in other countries. Lord, we are so grateful that you are not contained in the smallness of, of our thoughts, the smallness of our imagination. We thank you that you're not contained in a small box, that you're not just in this place of, of worship. You're everywhere at all times, knowing everything. And we're so, we're so honored that, that you called us to yourself. Lord, we love you. We exalt you. We magnify you. We focus on you. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. Let's stand together and let's sing. His heart tumbled as his mind searched for answers. 
Peace is not a word they would have used to describe that evening, nor peace a word to describe this time in our world. With all that's going on in our chaotic world and the tumbling of our own lives, how could Christmas be thought of as a time of peace? Christmas is not first about lights and bells, wrapped presents and festive parties, soft singing and lighting of candles. That first Christmas and every Christmas after that is about rescue. Hell is coming. Christmas is about being delivered. The perfect time for light is when the darkness is greatest. The perfect time for hope is when despair has you in the deepest pit. The perfect time for the Prince of Peace to ride is when the heart is tumbling. And the perfect time for the advent of Jesus is in the middle of the night. That means this day is the perfect day to light this candle of peace. As surely as the Prince of Peace was swaddled in old clothes and present in a feeding trough long ago, he is right here, right now. Amen. If he will come as a helpless infant on a dark night while the world is panicked and reeling, then surely he is in the person of his spirit with us. He himself is our peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. From the book of Romans, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Shall we pray? Eternal Lord Jesus, how grateful we are this morning that you yourself are our peace. It is not that you are our peace because you make everything about our lives nice and comfortable. It is not that you quiet all the noise around us and all the disturbance in the world. But it is that you are present with us. You are present in your spirit in us. And with your indwelling presence, we know that we are loved, that we are tended, that we are safe in the way that safety really matters. Knowing that we are loved and tended and safe by the hand of you, the Almighty God, the center of our lives, remains in peace. Thank you for this great gift that does not fade in any storm. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing these beautiful Advent hymns, Away in a Manger and Silent Night.
righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. I want us to think about 
just for a moment, peace. Think about peace. Peace. Vrede, Pots, Mir, Pau, Fred, Friede, Paco, Paz, Pas, Shalom. Regardless of the language, peace at its very core means a state of tranquility, a state of quietness, freedom from disturbance, a state of security and order. Peace. God, through the prophet Isaiah, I read it just a few moments ago, God said through Isaiah about Jesus Christ, for unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Now, I know God's word is true. Don't you? I know that God's word was true. Then, Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, and his peace will never end. I know that God's word is true today. Jesus Christ is still the Prince of Peace, and his peace will never end. Because of all that's going on around us, even though I know God's word is true, I'm still compelled within myself. Well, I'm Peace is in the midst of the storm. That's your first point. You want to write that down. Peace is in the midst of the storm. So our first text that we will look at this morning is Luke chapter 1, 26 through 38. You have it? Luke 1, 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth to a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be, but the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants. How long? Forever. His kingdom will what? Never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel. I'm a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive in her womb in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled, then the angel left her. Then our other text, let's look at our other text. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Have you got it? You ready? This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, betrothed to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from 
from their sins. Verse 22, all of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Now we see in Luke 1, verse 27, we see in Matthew 1, verse 25, that Mary and Joseph were pledged, betrothed, engaged to each other, and that they didn't consummate their marriage until sometime after Mary had given birth to Jesus. There's one very important thing that we don't see. We don't see a wedding. We don't see a wedding ceremony. We don't see a wedding celebration. Where were the wedding garments? Those garments that were meticulously made. Every stitch had a meaning. Where were the bridesmaids? Where were the groomsmen? Where, were the, where, where was the, the, biblical, the biblical bridal chamber where the marriage was to be consummated? Where were all those things? After the wedding celebrations, traditionally, God honoring traditions, the wedding party would wait outside that bridal chamber until the groom tells the best man that the marriage has been consummated. After that announcement, the guests, they would rejoice and they would celebrate for seven days. We complain about an hour-long wedding. Man, that was a long wedding. It was 45 minutes. They celebrated for seven days, God honoring tradition. Then, marriage life was to begin. The pledge, the betrothal, the engagement, the wedding festivities in biblical Jewish culture, still today, it remains the ultimate traditional dream wedding. But for Mary and Joseph, it wasn't the ultimate traditional dream wedding, was it? It was far from it. Mary and Joseph, they were engaged. The bride price had been paid. Promises had been made. All of the marriage covenant documentation had been signed. In their relationship, they were in that somewhere between one to two year waiting period. So far, so good. Then the storm hit Hard. The storm hit their hearts. It hit their minds. No doubt, like the strength of a Category 5 hurricane. The storm hit. Mary was pregnant with someone else's child. Joseph was filing for divorce. What will their parents say? What will their family and friends think? Oh, what disgrace. What humiliation. You know those thoughts ran through their hearts and minds. But peace. Peace in the midst of the storm. God, the one who created the storm, was in control of the storm. The angel said to her, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. Peace in the midst of the storm. God, the one who created the storm, was in control of the storm. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. In the midst of their storm, Mary and Joseph realized that God is God of the storm. When they realized that God was in control, their turbulent life storm suddenly changed to peace. We understand this from their responses, as we just read it. 
Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be to me fulfilled. Peace. Joseph responded by taking Mary home to be his wife. Didn't consummate the marriage until she had given birth. They both were at peace. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them. There was no guest room available for them. Where is Peace. Where is peace? Peace is in the midst of the circumstance. Peace is in the midst of the circumstance. Traditionally, <clears throat> Jewish childbirth was a great, wonderful, high celebration, God honoring celebration. The soon to be mother would be taken to a familiar place of comfort. A midwife would be there to deliver the baby while the women of the family encircled the soon-to-be mother providing much-needed love and support. A family member would step up and cut the umbilical cord. Another family member would wash the newborn infant with water. Another would rub the baby down with salt and another would put freshly washed clothes on the baby. Then the excited new parents would give their that baby a name. It was truly a high, high celebration, a true family affair. But for Mary and Joseph, their circumstance, it wasn't traditional at all. It was very far from it. They were coming out of peace. They were in the eye of the storm. Now they're into the backside of the storm after a grueling dirt road 70 to 90 mile trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem. The time came for Mary to give birth. There's no familiar place of comfort. There was no room available for them. Only an animal pen and a feeding trough. 
There was no midwife, no fresh washed clothes for the baby. There's no celebratory circle of family members. There was only Joseph. Poor Mary. <laughs> There's only Joseph and some barnyard animals. But peace. Peace was there in the midst of their circumstance. In the midst of their circumstance, Mary and Joseph understood that God is God of the circumstance. Again, I want you to think for just a moment. Right now, what is your circumstance? Give it a name. Go ahead. Give it a name. What is your circumstance? Now I want you to listen and apply. God, the one who allowed the circumstance in your life is in control of your circumstance. God is God of the circumstance. If you look close enough in spiritual eyes, you will see that peace is there. Peace is there in the midst of your circumstance. Where is peace? Peace is in, with, and through Jesus Christ. At your third point. Peace is in, with, and through Jesus Christ. Peace is a person. The angel said to Mary, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. He will be great and his name will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. The angel said to Joseph, she, Mary, will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. As I said in the introduction, God, through the prophet Isaiah, said about Jesus Christ, For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of his greatness of the government and the greatness of his peace, there will be no end. To the first disciples and every disciple after them, including us, Jesus in John 14, 27 said, I am leaving you. I am leaving you with a gift. Peace. Peace of mind, peace of heart. And the peace that I give is a gift. The world cannot give it. So don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. Peace. Peace. In the midst of your storm. Peace. In the midst of your circumstance. Peace is a person. Peace is in with and through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Kim, the praise team, who is that? You a cop? Kim a cop. <clears throat> They're coming to lead us in our song of reflection, but before they do, allow me to reflect if we ask you so far, how is this Christmas comparing to your past Christmas season? Miserable. For Christmas is past, if you're honest, you might choose words like busy, hectic, frantic. Maybe this was due to a self-inflicted, overloaded schedule. I don't know. Whatever the reason. Maybe you have found yourself robbed of peace. Well, for Christmas present, as I said last week, you have been given a very special gift. You and I have been given a very special gift because of COVID. You and I have been, have been given the time, we've been given the space to 
to rediscover Christmas. You've been given the time, I've been given the time and space to rediscover Christmas hope. You and I have been given the time and the space to rediscover Christmas peace if we choose to. It depends on what we're focusing on. Jesus said, I give you my peace, not the world's. Let me encourage you this morning. Rediscover Christmas. Rediscover Christmas. Rediscover Christmas peace. Peace that is in the midst of your storm. Peace that is in the midst of your circumstances. And the peace that is in with and through Jesus Christ. Alone, Jesus is peace. Let Him be your focus. This morning during our song of reflection, they're going to lead us in no longer slaves. <clears throat> during our song of reflection, I want to give you the opportunity at your seat, at the altar, whatever you're comfortable with. I want to give you the opportunity to come before God and allow Him to exchange your storm for peace. To allow Him to exchange your circumstance for peace. I want to encourage you to come before God this morning at your seat at the altar. Come before God this morning and allow Jesus to be your peace. Let's stand together. You respond as the Holy Spirit leads you to respond. Lead however. I'll be here to pray with you if you want me to. If not, fine. I'll step to my seat there. But the altar's here in your seats. Exchange what's going on in your life for peace. <laughs>
some encouraging words, and this is in the form of a spoken benediction, and then uh, we're going to conclude our time together with singing ourselves out by Go Tell It On The Mountain, then you'll be dismissed. Your encouragement this morning comes from several passages. Let me just mention the books, because I don't want ever people to think that these are my words, because they are not. Philippians 4, Colossians 3, Hebrews 12, Romans 12, 2 Thessalonians 3. These are words for your encouragement. This Christmas season, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, as far as it depends on me, live at with everyone. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Let's sing together. Go tell them.